the regulators and the disease-based communities, researchers and patients, at least in order to, to convey to the regulators our concerns and uh, the criteria according to which uh, we uh, would like uh, new drugs uh, to be developed. Uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the idea here is very simple. Uh, it would be very useful if uh, we could have such a multi-sponsorship of clinical studies because this would allow intergroup studies which uh, uh, would be so important in rare cancers all the more. And uh, we need networks, networks focusing on both healthcare and research. Uh, the problem is that uh, these networks uh, uh, cost, so we would need uh, money for the medical extra time uh, which is consumed in these networks. Uh, I too will go to Paris uh, for the Conticanet uh, meeting, of course, uh, this evening. Uh, the problem of Conticanet, of your bonnet, is that now they are not funded anymore. So the problem is when a, a network of excellence is being funded, uh, what happens to this network? Uh, do we have means to uh, sustain these networks once uh, uh, the funding uh, is over? Or don't you believe uh, that uh, it would be a subsidiarity uh, tool to fund these networks? Because networks need to be funded, otherwise they don't exist. And if we want EU networks, probably the EU should do something, because otherwise nobody will do anything. Uh, then uh, we have uh, methodological problems. Uh, you know that we are switching from chemotherapy to targeted therapies. So the new drugs in medical oncology are targeted. And our problem is uh, the untargeted use of targeted drugs. You know very well this problem. Uh, there is so much discussion in the community on the small differences with these new expensive drugs. Uh, are these small differences worthwhile? The problem is, uh, you know, that these small differences are often due to small proportions of patients taking a huge benefit. The problem is that uh, uh, in a clinical trial, these subgroups may be more or less represented depending on the patient selection. What is the problem here? The problem is that uh, with clinical trials, uh, you need a lot of patients. So there is a conflict between the statistical precision of a study and the clinical precision. So the more you target your patient population, uh, the more you uh, lose in terms of statistical precision. So the problem is a problem of methodology, and it is a problem of linking uh, our clinical data with biological data. Here we need uh, tumor tissues, uh, tumor samples. Uh, all the patients are willing to donate uh, their leftover uh, tissues to research. The problem is that this kind of donation is difficult, and it is difficult basically because of regulatory constraints, and especially privacy rules are important in this regard. So they are an obstacle. And uh, uh, there are obstacles uh, which vary across uh, European Union countries. Uh, so here we would need a major effort, because if we don't have uh, these tissue samples for clinical studies, but not only for clinical studies. We need tissue banks also to make it possible to select the proper patient populations in clinical trials. Because uh, it's relatively easy to have the samples for clinical trials, but we don't have the samples for tissue banks in order to analyze patient populations just to target uh, our patient populations in clinical trials. So there is a problem of rules. We tried uh, uh, to do something uh, on this, uh, and uh, uh, we tried to, to wonder whether uh, there are, 
I mean, uh, ways to overcome these regulatory problems. And uh, uh, the methodological problem. Uh, the frequentist uh, approach uh, of the current medical statistics may not be the ideal one uh, at a time when uh, we have more and more targeted agents in which the difference is that we have a strong preclinical rationale quite often, not always, of course. So in other terms, we have a prior probability which is different from the prior probability we had with chemotherapy. Basically, when we started a study on chemotherapy, we didn't, do, um, we didn't know really if uh, there was a strong uh, rationale for that drug to work in that tumor. Now, the situation is different. So possibly other kinds of approaches from the medical statistics point of view could be uh, more appropriate uh, to uh, allow us to incorporate the preclinical rationale in uh, the generation of data. In other words, even a single patient was uh, uh, so important in GIST, for example. Uh, K0 in GIST was crucial. Why? Because the preclinical rationale was very strong, and so even one patient may mean a lot while if the preclinical rationale uh, were not uh, available, of course, you would need more patients. So a kind of statistics considering uh, that even uh, a small piece of evidence may mean a lot uh, if the preclinical rationale is uh, strong. This kind of statistics uh, would be very important. Uh, as uh, the World Sarcoma Network, uh, we are trying to to build it today, we are trying uh, to explore new methodologies for the early development of new drugs, even in rare sarcomas, following a Bayesian statistics. But uh, of course, uh, this kind of global efforts uh, needs money. Uh, so uh, these are some of the uh, ideas uh, which we are trying to pursue through the European Action Against Rare Cancers, which is a multi-stakeholder initiative led by ESMO, and uh, I hope really that uh, our initiative can be useful in the next uh, three years in order to make progress in this regard. I mean, in all these uh, uh, areas uh, which have to do with the organization of trials, with the organization of networks, uh, with the rules of trials, uh, with the methodology of trials, uh, and so on. Thank you. <coughs>